Yesterday on the channel, I talked about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for a bit of a change of pace. Now, I know I'm a little late to that conversation, but I really like the game. So if you want a spoiler-free discussion on why it's so fantastic, click the link down below. Shameless plugs aside, welcome to another Bethesda video, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. So every day when I wake up, I'll grab my phone, I will go on Twitter, see if there's any gaming news that has popped up, and sort of plan my day from there. Yes, welcome to the life of a YouTuber where my life is determined by a news cycle. <laughs> anyway, I'm scrolling through and I see that Bethesda Game Studios has posted patch notes for update number 15 for Fallout 76. And when I initially saw it, I thought, okay, I doubt there's going to be anything here that I can make a video out of, but I should read it to stay updated on what Bethesda's doing to a game that I've consistently covered for about over a year now. So I scrolled through it and I was actually pretty surprised. This has to be one of the meatiest updates when it comes to bug tuning and fixes that I've actually seen with Fallout 76. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of objects listed here. Nothing in the terms of new gameplay features, just straight fixes across the board. And like I said, it's a really large write-up. So I thought to myself, good for Bethesda and I was ready to move on but then I said hold on wait we got to look into the fallout first aspect here and so I started scrolling again and I got my counting going now depending on how you categorize it whether you want to include stuff like little UI fixes or actual mechanics being fixed there's about 20 to 27 things on this list throughout the patch notes that revolve around Fallout first. And objectively speaking, I will say in all fairness, it should be Bethesda's number one priority to fix something that people are paying an additional amount of money for, right? If you're paying X amount of dollars a month for a product, Bethesda should be working to fix that. And it's all good that Bethesda's fixing this stuff. I'm happy because there are people, believe it or not, who are subscribed to Fallout First. And my thing I was saying for a lot of videos is Bethesda, if you're gonna continue selling this at this price, at least make sure it works, which it seems like they're getting to that point. But all it highlights is that Bethesda rushed this out and they just wanted to put it out there for people to buy and they'll fix it later. They probably had a plan in place that was executed well ahead of time. Fallout First was supposed to launch with Wastelanders, but once Wastelanders got delayed, obviously they said, oh, just launch Fallout First on its own and we've seen the results of that. Now, the reason I think these patch notes are important to highlight and that I wanted to talk about it in today's video, because if you head over to MMOG Fails, Dot com, which is a blog spot that myself and a lot of other YouTubers have covered ever since Fallout first popped up because they've had a lot of inside information that has turned out to be correct about Bethesda, their plans for Fallout first. And as I read through some of the comments, some of them do date back to about a week old and we haven't seen comments since about November 15th. But he does mention that the ultimate goal of Fallout 76 is to become what they call self-sufficient, which I think is the goal of any other live service game, right? You want to continuously make money through this game sheerly existing, through the player base just buying in and playing and enjoying cosmetics and services. And when you look at how many Fallout first related things are in the patch notes, it's sort of a depressing reality because I can promise you, as someone who's covered this game since before its launch, heading into its launch, I put about 80 hours in in the first month to make sure I had a fair, honest review. I can tell you with all the truth in my heart, Bethesda did not have this much pep in their step to fix the game initially. Absolutely not. They were very much establishing a communication line. And then when we said, hey, fix the stash, they added like a hundred pounds to the stash and said, we're waiting to make sure the server can handle it. Server stability was awful. Frame rates were awful. There was so much horrible about this game that they took their time to fix. And a lot of those issues to this day, like performance, still persist, at least on a base PS4, maybe on the PS4 Pro. And I'm, I know on the PC, it runs a lot better, but for certain situations, it does not run well. There's still stuff from launch that plagues this game. But when it comes to Fallout First, a brand new subscription service where you have to pay $13 a month, you bet your bottom dollar, literally, that Bethesda will be hopping in to fix something that can make them more money. And once again, I'm not gonna sit here and argue with myself because they are a business. They should make sure their external services attached to a product do function well. But once again, goes back to point A, which is, make sure it works then sell it because here's the thing what happens is the conversation could just be about the pricing what could improve within the service but instead it goes to point b which is none of this stuff works this was rushed out and that's where the anger really starts to propel it takes a serious amount of balls to put a subscription service on a game like fallout 76 
that's all fine and well. Almost some people will respect you for your nutsack. <laughs> can't believe I said that. At least it would be functioning, right? Like that's the thing. <laughs> At least it would be functioning. But instead we do a ballsy move and then it doesn't work. So what happens is the conversation shifts to just how tone deaf is Bethesda or how much did they rush this or how little do they care about their consumers, right? Like you could be all the way over here, but you went here, here, and here because of a rushed move. And obviously it's the past at this point. It's been multiple weeks since it happened, since the Outer Worlds launched, funny enough. So I'm not gonna sit here and beat a dead horse, so to speak, but all I'm saying is I just look at how they hustled to get this patch out. The base game did not matter. And there is a line you can tell between being a business and making money. No one has any argument with that. I think a lot of gamers, at least in this sphere on YouTube and Twitch and social media, have started to learn that gaming, while it is fun, is a business. And these companies, in order to continue providing us products, need to make money. It's as simple as that. And I think a lot of people have put that one together, although it took a little bit longer than it should have. People are starting to get that. It's more so about how you go about it. There is a fair way to make money, a lot of money, and please your consumers, which also MMOG Fails did cite, saying that they're trying to find a balance between satisfying consumers as well as making this game self-sufficient. And quite honestly, it just looks like they're focusing on making it self-sufficient, provided the player base stays there, which I've seen stats and Fallout 76 is growing and it kind of makes sense. It's in the news cycle. They announced Fallout first. It really seemed to have worked in Bethesda's favor, which is kind of crazy. I know a lot of gamer outrage seems falsified online. I mean, we just saw how Pokemon Sword and Shield was getting stomped out everywhere across the web. People were highlighting reused assets, developers lying. There was just so much going on with that issue and it grew more and more and more. It was being covered by mainstream media. YouTubers were talking about it, what have you. Let's just say according to gamesindustry.biz, Pokemon Sword alone is the UK number one and the biggest exclusive game of the year. In fact, Pokemon Sword is the biggest box game launch of 2019 behind FIFA 20 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The double pack, which includes both Sword and Shield, is listed separately and arrives at number seven. So I know a lot of internet hate and anger seems to make us feel like we're in this position up on the high ground, right? And we're shooting down at Bethesda and they have to obey our commands. But at the end of the day, no matter what controversy seems to hit these companies, a lot of people can't seem to just, I guess, control themselves and say, eh, I'll skip Pokemon this year, right? At the end of the day, you're in that store, you have the money and you go, I do like Pokemon, right? And I think that's sort of what happened with Fallout. I wouldn't blame people if they saw Fallout 76 for what, $10, $15 on store shelves and went, well, I did like previous Fallout games and 10 bucks. I mean, what am I losing out on? You try it out and if you only paid 10 bucks for it, you might end up enjoying it. I mean, I've played it enough to just say that I don't like it and I'll wait for Wastelanders. I haven't played it since before Fallout first even launched. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, I don't wanna sound like a Debbie Downer. We do have a voice on the internet. When you are vocal enough, it will invoke change. We just have to look at the Sonic movie when you check out the first trailer, which is now deleted, versus the new trailer that came out, and it looks like a totally different movie that respects the franchise. Although, I have a bit of a conspiracy theory on that one that I think the first trailer was intentionally awful, otherwise no one would have cared about a Sonic movie, but it's just a conspiracy theory. Point being is that we can invoke change in our industries if we are vocal enough. It's just about the company's willingness to listen and if that outspoken nature may impact their bottom line. And that's why you have to hit them where they hurt. So with Bethesda, it's pretty easy. Just don't buy into the subscription service. But with a company like EA, for example, it's hard not to because you'll see a great honest developer like Respawn Entertainment release Jedi Fallen Order, but you'll see the EA name on it. And there's that conflict conflict of interest where eventually you go, nah, screw it. So that's sort of what I'm focusing on. There's a lot of nah, screw it in our industry and I can't blame people. I certainly had that moment with Jedi Fallen Order. I was like, oh, this game looks really good. And I think that's where a lot of consumers lie. We just want our games, man. We just want them to be good, enjoyable, and more importantly, fair. 
And I think at that point, if that's what we're getting, a lot of people are extremely forgiving of these companies. Anyway, just a conversation I thought was worth having. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for yet another Bethesda update. We'll have another Bethesda focus video tomorrow. We're going to be talking about some of the new Creation Club content coming to Fallout 4. And I think that'll be an interesting conversation to have because it does seem that Bethesda is delivering on a promise that they made a while ago. So we'll talk more about that then. I'd love to hear what you're thinking about Fallout 76 and this latest patch in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and a big thank you to all the patrons you see on screen. This is a new thing we're adding into videos that I added as one of my patron pledges. Thank you guys so much for making these videos possible. I really appreciate each and every single one of you, and I'll talk with you all soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.